welcome to the channel thank you everyone for tuning in so a couple of weeks ago i put a post out there on my community page uh, asking you guys if you're interested in a series that i wanted to cover i wanted to do the best seiko homages out there you know by watch category or watch type i.e the best 62 mass the best 6105 etc but you know i want to go through a couple of things before going to the video first and foremost i need you guys to understand the scope of a video like this there's a lot of seiko homages out there and you know they've only picked the most popular ones so i've picked out of the potential of maybe nine different seiko homages i can go through i've actually picked four most iconic ones uh, and i've had to leave off by five or six um, but at the end of the video i'll give you a very quick you know this is the best this is the best this is the best because you know it's not something i can cover and as you guys know the aliexpress sale is drawing to a close very fast there's not you know a lot of time left so i want to get this video out uh, just before then now in case you are wondering you know i don't see all the watches here how can you do this comparison how can you talk about x y and z you know what then you're probably new right I've got over 400 videos on this channel. I've also created a playlist which I want you guys to check out. And that playlist is just full of comparisons. So all the watches that I will be speaking about today, I've had hands-on experience. A lot of them I've had in my collection for, for a number of months. Um, and, but you know, with that size of collection, you just really can't keep everything. So, you know, up until a couple of weeks ago, I've just sold a few models off. But anything which I haven't touched, I'll make sure I let you guys know. So it'll be a mix of, you know, live watches, and of course pictures from aliexpress um what am i not going to do i'm not going to go into details of specifications or dimensions i think for this video i hope you guys understand that but everything will be linked so you know you can go on the website uh, you can go on aliexpress and check it out i'll only mention specifications or dimensions if they're a standout feature of the watch um i'm trying to make a point with it but i will name the price of every single watch uh, and then give some honorable mentions as well there will be models i'm probably going to miss so i'm only including the more you know kind of popular or famous ones i'm not going to touch brands which have just come out or the kind of miscellaneous where you know like more like mushroom brands where one watch popped up and then you know they disappeared uh you know if anything is there worth mentioning i will definitely mention it then do share your thoughts on the outcome of the comparisons to see if you guys agree with what i'm saying watches that i'm going to look at or the style of watches is going to be the Tuna series, the 62 Mass series, and of course the MM300. Um, so I hope you guys are excited for this video. Like I said, I put in a lot of time and effort into this. Um, but you know, this is what we do. It's worth it. This is where the passion lies. So let me clear this desk up and let's introduce to you the first contenders in the 6105 category. Okay. So before I start, let me give you guys a wrist shot. I am wearing the Revelo 39mm Hex Mariner on wrist. That is a stunning watch check out the full review on this now let me name off the contenders first and foremost is the sd1970 from steel dive priced at 65 to 70 pounds and that's come down over the years they started at 120 130 pounds uh, and you know they've just been coming down since then so that is that's why this is the best value for money then we've got the heimdaller at 130 pounds of course the category also includes san martin as a contender at 160 pounds uh, and then you've got the Radune 6105 at £167. And then uh, it's worth mentioning Tandorio as well, coming in at the same price as the Steel Dive SD1970. So with regards to the Steel Dive SD1970, you know, there's not much I can say. Like I said, I mean, I think I had probably one of the first videos out there of this watch. I believe it was the first actual, you know, watch review. Uh, and then also I did the first video when I compared the version 1 and 2. Uh, I still have the version 1, so this watch is, is very old now. It still does work. I haven't worn it in a very long time. And the version 1 had that coin edge bezel, uh, a different style, should I say. And it gives you all the specs, right? I mean, this was mind-blowing for me, starting off then. Sapphire crystal, ceramic bezel insert, full stainless steel, Seiko N35 movement. Side note, it is extremely windy outside, so you can probably hear the wind howling away. A great loom, uh, you know, great quality, uh, great build quality as well. Uh, and, you know, for the price, 60 or 70 pounds, this makes them the best within the 6105 range. So, you know, one of the biggest moans about this watch was, you know, how authentic is it? How close it is to a 6105? You know, there's a lot of fans out there of that particular model. So then this is where the Heimdaller comes in. Now the Heimdaller comes with a aluminium bezel. Now, I think they also do a few ceramic inserts, but for that traditional dial setup, uh, they've got the aluminium bezel insert. Um, they do seem to have a deeper chamfer on the crystal as well. I can't recall right now if they've got a domed glass or a flat, I believe it's flat. 
Um, and one of the things which stood out about the Heimdall was on the dial, you know, they had that Sua logo from the Japanese Sua factory and, you know, from the older 6105 8110s, that S was also visible. It's also visible on a lot of the older, you know, vintage uh, Japanese watches that originate from that factory. So that was a big bonus for a lot of the guys, you know, seeing that. And, you know, a lot of this kind of video that I'm going to do now is going to have a lot of feedback from, you know, subscribers. And that's what I want to mention in my thoughts. So it's not just my opinion. Um, but, you know, with Heimdall, they give you a lot more dial options. They've got a few special editions, let's call it, you know, the frost dials. Um, great dial work. You know, they've kept up, I think, that model. They've got loads of variants. And they recently just introduced, you know, full titanium versions coming at £170. Pounds. Um, but, you know, with titanium, you do have that issue with the bezel. It doesn't really rotate as well as you'd like it to. So that's where the Heimdallah sits. And I think it is, a, you know, torn between Seal Diversity 1970 or the Heimdallah, but it's almost double the price. And I don't think it necessarily offers double the value. Now, the next one, the San Martin, it's not something which I reviewed because at that point in time, I looked at so many, I truly didn't think there was any need. But if we look at some of the reviews uh, and what people are talking about, I think San Martin just gives you that bit more of refinement. As far as I'm aware, all the cases are exactly the same amongst these models. You know, the brush the same. The brushing isn't the finest. It is kind of hairline circular brushing. Uh, and the cases are pretty much, you know, more or less the same. There's not any major differences. Uh, San Martin does offer a domed crystal on theirs, um, but it does have really nice hands. Um, it, you've got a capped seconds hand, you know, going way back then when San Martin released this. So it was of a high quality and at 160 pounds, it was a very fair deal. Uh, now, while I talk about the hands and dial, I think, let me go back to the Heimdallah for a second. The Heimdallah also has really good quality uh, dials. Um, you know, they used, you know, these lacquered dials on a lot of their watches and their handsets were amazing. Uh, just to compare, the 6105 had very flat polished hands and when they done the version 2 they went down a step in QC that the loom kind of went a bit duller and the hand quality just go down and the hand quality went down a bit as well whereas Heimdallah stayed the same they've got these linear brush dials with bevel polished edges and you know because I've modded quite a few of these watches you could definitely feel you know the strength of those hands the thickness um, so yeah Heimdallah was always great and San Martin really used high quality hands and dials also so then we bring in uh, the Rudune 6105 Uh It's come out not too long ago, uh, and I obviously reviewed that watch as well. And the feedback was incredible. It is probably the most um, accurate homage to date. Um, you know, I think a lot of the you know proper enthusiasts for the 6105-8110, Captain Willard, spoke up in the comment section and said, you know, the chamfer is great. Not uh, not exactly the same uh, because the six because the Captain Willard had a very deep chamfer, but he had a dome crystal. The bezel was spot on, very buttery smooth. The case was actually slightly different as well. The case was a little stockier, a little wider, really great finishing on there. Uh, and the dial was spot on. The hands were, you know, finished as good as the Heimdall and the San Martin, minus the capped seconds hand. So I think for this category, you know, you've got to define what is the best. I think for most accurate, the Redoule 6105 takes it by, you know, a mile, uh, coming in at £167. And it's worth paying for because they gave you that in that chocolate bar style strap as well. So, you know, a very kind of authentic homage. It did please a lot of people. Um, whereas the Steel Divest 1970 is the best value for money, hands down. £60, £70, you know, pounds, you cannot mess with it. And this is where I think Tandorio steps in. They came in rock bottom, same price as the steel dive. But I have no doubt in my mind they've got the same case. But from the reviews I saw and a couple of the pictures, and it's not one I've reviewed myself. As I said, I don't feel there's any need. Um, you know, it's got, I think, quite poor loom on the dial uh, and poor loom on the handset. Uh, so, you know, that being said, I'd rather spend a bit more or just go to the steel dive just for something that, you know, gives me everything I need. But let me give you an honorable mention right now. Let me bring in, I think, the best captain willard or well as i coined the term as i call these the king willard so merca came out with this ocean master 300 um quite a popular video of mine and i gotta say i absolutely love these watches i've not been able to sell them because merca discontinued them and it's not something i'm going to get back i don't think and i think it's a, just a beefed up version of the captain willard hence i've called it the king willard uh great bezel uh you know it's a partially loom bezel uh great hour markers you know i love the cathedralized hands large uh immense detail in this you know if you haven't seen this i want you guys to check out that review and i also um bought uh, the plain black dial one just red seconds hand the red text yeah merca have not made a great dial watch in such a long time and i really miss those days when they did i mean that bezel 
the best. And this is the reissue Seiko should have made. And I don't know why Seiko didn't just introduce a more badass version to the Captain Willard. Um, but yeah, you know, out of those, they discontinued. So whatever I said before, that definitely stands. Uh, okay, so now let's move on to the tuners. Now, I don't have any tuners in my collection except um, the baby tuners. And, you know, the baby tuner Yellowfin from Seiko. And I think I felt that's enough, you know, this is all I need. Uh, but prior to that, the tuner I did keep was the Proxima. So let me introduce the contenders, the top contenders for, you know, the best tuner homage. Uh, starts off with Steel Dive with the SD1975 coming in at £80. Uh, then you've got the Heimdaller starting at 120 you know, going up to 130 whatever, uh, for their tuner homages. And I'm not going to mention the one kilometer tuners. I'm going to mention, you know, the like for like tuners, uh, uh, you know, the SBB, whatever, whatever, because Seiko tuner, like they've got more models, uh, even, more, even more than the homages out there. Then you've got the San Martin in the same category coming in at, uh, with their tuner for £162. Um, and then you've also got the Proxima coming in at £180 with their tuner. And then I've got an honorable mention uh, within this category also. So for the SD1975, I had loads of them. I modified loads of them. Really like that watch. Um, I think, it, it, again, it's the best value for money watch uh, within that category. £80 um, and you get Ceramic, Sapphire, Seiko S85. For the most part, because that loads in my hand, um, the bezel rotation was pretty consistent. Uh, you know, basic kind of finishing, brushed really well. Everything worked. Uh, I mean, the bracelet options weren't the best. They were just, you know, aftermarket, stick them on, uh, and they don't really match the watch. But the engineer bracelet they provided, you can't really go wrong with that. It did kind of suit the watch. Um, second up is the Heimdall at £120 starting. Um, they had the exact same case as a steel dive, same shroud, same quality. But what they did, they had slightly better dial options. And now I recognize steel dive have gone for more colors now, uh, but Heimdall still had better dial options um, and they had more versions as well. So Heimdall also came out with a street series tuner uh, in titanium with coming at 165, 170 pounds, which was quite striking to look at. Uh, I think they came out with it last year. Um, and you know they've got I think really nice handset that they use they use those tuna frogman style hands as well as the traditional tuna style hands um, you know and going back to the great dial and great handset that they always produce and put into all their watches now one thing that Heimdall also had they had the best bracelet uh, I used one of their bracelets on one of my baby tuners it looked stunning I'll see if I can put a picture up I modified this built it with the original parts uh, to make a baby tuner but I used that bracelet so it's the same bracelet as the you know the that typical Seiko tuner. So now next, San Martin. Again, due to all the tuner homages out there, San Martin, I didn't really give it a second look. So my question is, you know, was there any need for it? Assumptions wise, let's use the track record. Everything would have been great with it. Uh, there weren't that many dial options. You know, it was just there. They'd done that in a bronze version. It was pretty early days for San Martin as well. So 162 pounds. You know, I don't think there's any need for it, but if you did get it, uh, I think that is still a, I think, fairly decent watch. But, you know, I haven't seen any reviews on it or I've not looked at the watch. Uh, so please bear that in mind. Now, coming up to the Proxima, one of my most favorite tuner homages. Uh, I kept one for quite a while till I sold it off. And I went for that, you know, ruby red sunburst style, you know, with that funky uh, kind of date window cut out in the center. Um, and that's the thing with the Proxima series. They gave you the basic black dial uh, with the stainless steel bezel insert or the ceramic bezel insert or the sapphire uh, and that looked cracking right really good uh, looked very similar uh, to you know the Seiko that it was homaging the bracelet was pants just a thick massive bracelet just too big you don't need it um, but it worked really well on a tropical or a waffle strap in this comparison I think they're the only one with a monoblock case uh, so you had to open the watch from the front um, and yes yeah, solid and it had the better finished bezel uh, it had the better finished shroud as well uh, a nicer bezel rotation amazing loom on the dial great quality of hands um, uh, and yeah that was an incredible watch but it is at 180 pounds uh, but I think you get a lot more as well for that price. Um, just monitor bracelet, of course. And with Proxima, as you guys know, they kind of devalue themselves. They just made so many variants of it. Uh, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but you know, that's there with that Proxima tuner. So I think the best tuner series out there definitely goes to Heimdaller. Um, you know, they got a good middle ground, good price, and they give you so many, you know, relevant variants. Like Proxima are kind of irrelevant sometimes. Um, you know, great dial options and that great bracelet. So the more complete package, in my opinion. 
honourable mention time and I have to bring in the Rectangular, the Zaku Special Edition. Um, I love that watch. That was badass AF, uh, quite pricey, £236. Um, but I think uh, they did quite a kind of particular special edition. I think everything was built for purpose. Um, it fitted and it did fit quite well. I love that dial. The handset used was great and they've done such a good job. But the pricey option, that's why I've seen the honorable mentions. So the next round, the next watch we're looking at is the 62 Mass Homage and the contenders are the Steel Dive, I think SD1962. I totally take that out of the equation. When I had it in hand, I was very disappointed with it. It had some deformed bubble glass, uh, crap bezel, just did not feel right. So I'm not even going to include it in this category. And I'm sorry to everybody who bought one and uh, you know think it's a great watch, but I didn't mention the negativity in my video. Uh, so let's bring in the Heim Dollar. Then the Heim Dollar also was the first watch that I bought from AliExpress uh, because I bought three watches from AliExpress. Uh, the first time I ever used it, I bought the Proxima MM300 and I bought the Heimdall 62 Mass and the Steel Dive Captain Willard, I think within a short amount of time within each other. Um, so the Heimdall 62 Mass is probably the OG 62 Mass that came out, 40 mil case, 50 mil log to log, you know, really nice domed or box style sapphire crystal, great dial option, ceramic bezel, great coinage bezel, and the bracelet was good for the most part as well. Now the second one contending is, of course, the San Martin. Came out with that like four or five different versions plus the 37 millimeter priced at uh, 174 the 40 mil versions and the 37 mil uh you know they want to take out arm and a leg for 260 pounds and then we've got 54 watch um now i want to make it clear i only want to talk about brands on aliexpress but i have to mention the 54 watch because that did totally change the game for me when it came to the 62 mass homages and that was priced at something like 200 and something like 220 250 um and then you've got of course you can't forget the seastern um coming in 144 145 pounds um Tandorio's sticking his head in there as well you know with a very cheap version a cheap alternative uh, and then you've got the newest member of the family the uh, Romalti. so let's go between all of them so i shared my thoughts with regards to steel dive we're not going to talk about that but the heimdala yeah as i mentioned great dial options they've also got the special editions with the frost dials and like i said everything is is good right everything is at a very reasonable level dials like lacquered dials because i've modified a few of them as well and i was impressed with the quality of the watch uh, inside handset again super good quality brushed beveled polished edges 160 pound it has gone up slightly i mean they started off 120 130 back in the day so they hold a good position within this category now if and if you go to the san martin uh, as i said they've done about four different versions i reviewed maybe two or three of them and i think the latest i think v4 or v3 which are one i've done a video comparing all three of them uh, in my in my playlist for comparisons it's worth checking it out i felt it was really going away from the 62 mass it did not look like a 62 mass anymore it was like overly refined if that makes sense and if you're thinking what the hell are you talking about watcher you know the 62 mass is very rudimentary in its essence you know it's a basic basic case design basic basic case shape um you know there's not a lot that goes into it and between the heimdall and 62 mass definitely the better option if the price is only 10 you know 15 pounds right now um but you know they're all 40 41 millimeter watches and you know i gather there is a kind of small section of you know viewers that do prefer the 40 millimeter case i am not one of those because you get a 50 mil log to log it's too long um and and a smaller wrist right it's the fault it's my wrist fault smaller wrist it doesn't look that good uh so this is where i think i'm going to mention 54 watch now 54 watch uh, i've still got the first one that i bought i did modify it because you know it, it was a game changer and i tend to keep the best homages and i do modify them um so i put an original dial in there uh and then i used the handset uh from i think 54 watch that's why there's a mismatch in the loom but what they did you know they gave an aluminium bezel insert uh coin edge bezel quite thin uh, and they actually had an original 6217 uh, which they you know cnc'd or copied or photocopied or whatever and they went and made their own uh, and then you've got a nice thick crown on there as well drill logs and this is what i mean it's very basic you know there's not a lot going on circular brushing polished sides but 
for the 62 mass the beauty is in that basic kind of you know uh, need that it fulfilled uh, i think it was seiko's maybe first diver and even the bezel insert looks kind of dated you got the silver out you got the silver markers there and since then they didn't make another version they've got a few dial color options but again it's not an aliexpress and it's slightly expensive for kind of how basic it is i really do love this one another game changer as you guys know Seaston landed and they came out with a very similar case and they just smashed the old case to pieces um, incredible specifications loomed bezel insert now bloom dial loom date window yes they had a couple of teething issues in the start you know polished frames great great dials i mean just look at this gray that's a perfect gray there um great hands you know brushed beveled edges which are polished um, the case right basic case i did say that but they went and brushed it satinized brushing they gave it a polished bevel edge uh, so they really did upgrade it and it feels premium in hand it feels so good it is very comfortable and there's little features like the bezel you know just on point the crown uh, engagement is buttery smooth you don't feel any of the threading uh, it just glides you know it just glides on um the strap you know the fkm rubber strap uh, i think this is german fkm as well so look how soft and supple that is and i use these straps for a lot of different watches if there's a watch out there that i can't really find a strap for and the bracelet's not an option i'll stick one of these on there all right incredible uh and then you know we've got remolti now i haven't done a full review on the remolti i haven't given it that much thought as you guys have seen the videos coming out very busy times but i will say this it comes a very close second to the season don't get me wrong it's it's great and everything but it's no season i'll go through that in my review and do a head-to-head -head comparison with these two watches as well but it's made really well you know don't, don't take don't take the wrong way uh but again it's just a very close second in my opinion um now tendorio we've got to talk about tendorio um what they are effectively is just a cheaper version of a heimdallah um they've got the same case guys that are very familiar with aliexpress uh and you know i'm giving you gems of information here that aliexpress you know heimdall i do sell a lot of the cases to everyone out there so you can pick up a case relatively cheap and tendori i've just got you know kind of one of the cases uh stuck in a cheaper dial cheaper hands um again i'm only going by what i've seen on videos and reviews um they could have improved it but not that i know of uh poor loom poor hands but they do give you like pt5000 for like under 100 quid so you know uh, for spec wise it's great but i'd be disappointed if, for, for me if i spent 80 pound and i'm still disappointed i'll rather spend 120 and be satisfied uh, that's what i think anyway so amongst what i've spoken about right if you're a fan of the 40 millimeter case then the san martin is a better option for you finish way better than the heimdallah but the heimdallah still has those retro rugged looks which kind of you know are synonymous with the 62 mass and i feel it keeps that identity alive uh, but if you like the more you know correctly proportioned watch uh seaston is the one it's probably the most refined uh, it's probably the most updated um and i think it it looks the best out of the bunch and it gives a better value for money i think seaston definitely steals a win uh, in the best 6-2 mass homage to date with remolti coming a close second so we've covered three out of the four models i can talk about we're at you know 20 odd minutes so i think i'm doing okay so now let's move on to the mm300 category so for the mm300 category the contenders are the steel dive sd uh 1965 or 68 i don't know which one coming in at 160 pounds um then the second one is the heimdallah coming in at 130 to 160 pounds um and then you've got the proxima which is in my hand here starting at 150 pounds but some of the later variants are 180 and then last the san martin m300 homage coming in 180 pounds so let's start by talking about the steel dive and the heimdallah both of them have the exact same case uh, they both have the exact same issue is a crappy bezel uh, very loose very inconsistent just poor all around i don't care if it's loomed you know ceramic whatever the spec is um yeah the bezel was just rubbish and i think on a dive watch like the m300 you know you need a great bezel uh, i believe and uh, they both were mono black cases uh, the steel dive had the basic three colors that they offer the bracelet was okay you know surprisingly for the steel dive um i think the heimdallah had great handset as well so this is where steel dive and heimdallah are kind of matched great dials from both great handsets from both um it was crap bezel uh they did both use a mono black case as well if i'm not mistaken 
Um, but the dials on some of the home dollars was just a bit better, but they, they didn't really go down the route that they went with, like with some of the other watches. Um, I don't think it was that popular in the end. Um, and Heimdall also offered a ST2130 uh, version. I think they still do on some uh, stores on AliExpress, so that's £190. And at one point, they did use the ETA2824. I've actually just remembered I've got a couple more watches lying around the room. Uh, it gets like this sometimes. I don't really, can't really keep track of what's around me. Uh, so Levi, one of the subscribers, um, did send me the Heimdall ETA2824, and I've got it in hand. Uh, so I can kind of talk about that there. Uh, and while I was digging around, I actually found a frost dial captain wheel from Heimdaller. So yeah, uh, just to give you a quick run, great bezel action. That dial is gorgeous. Um, it looks great on a dark blue tropical strap. Check out the review. And the bracelet is better than steel dives. Um, crown, case, yeah, as I said, you know, pretty much everything is the same as what I stated previously, but just thought I'd show it to you guys on screen. So sorry for that disruptor going back. Uh, so here's the Heimdaller, yeah. And, and what I mean by the bezel, it's just crap, right? Even though the movement behind it is worth more than the whole watch. Um, but the dial, hands, all great. And this is one of the reasons I think Levi sent it over. He couldn't really get the bezel to get to be how he wanted it to be. And he couldn't really modify it. So he sent it over. So I really appreciate that. But, you know, it's not had much way out of me. In regards to the Proxima, they do have so many dial options. So many bezel insert options. Uh, and I ended up modifying this twice. So I bought the curved ceramic, uh, so I bought the curved sapphire bezel, which was fully loomed. And then I wanted a flat bezel insert. So they sent me one on my next order uh, and I fitted uh, the bezel insert. And I was much, much happier. So they do a black dial version, a gilt version as well, which are kind of your basic colors. Um, I know the one I have, as I said, the dial has been modified. So it's kind of irrelevant. Um, but they also do loads of different variants, as you guys know. But a few significant ones uh, when they did that green dial version and when they did that metallic blue with that brushed dial with that stainless steel insert uh, and that Jubilee five link style bracelet. So that dial was incredible, such a beautiful dial. And you know, those videos are very popular that I've done and they're still on, uh, you know, on my channel um, and within the comparisons. So please check them out. So Proxima really did own the mn300 spot for a long time until san martin came along and san martin within my comparison and against my bias um san martin took the win they are the better mn300 much more refined uh the bezel was just everything about the watch was spot on functionality wise dial gray hands gray booming loom same as the proxima um bracelet much better than the proxima but it's worth noting the proxima uses a more kind of original style bracelet because this is what the m 2 will come with uh, and i've got another upgrade on mine i actually found a ratchet clasp uh, so you know i stuck that on my watch and this is why i've not sold it because i think i've built a really really good homage uh, as you guys can see as to the, you know between the san martin and proxima if you want the best sbdx 001 homage go for the uh, proxima does have the mono black case uh, it is quite kind of true to the original but the san martin gives you something else so a screw down case back same diameter as the proxima but thinner um so not as true to the original but definitely more wearable and as i said going back to the point much better in terms of finishing it's a bit more refined as well so between the two going back to my point the best sbdx 001 homage is the proxima but the best mm300 you know i think the latter models is the san martin but i do have an honorable mention yes i know it's an mm200 technically a homage because of the 42 millimeter case size and there are a few mm200 homages out there uh just to name a couple the thorn uh, i think the thorn on the lx as, uh, homage as well with the hangs out 6460 movement uh, but the Romalti again being a new contender uh, that's why it gets honorable mention and i think these are as good as the san martin i think the san martin takes it by a fraction on the bracelet um but the dial game is another level and they've also done the gmt version coming at 220 i mean this base version is 150 pounds and it still comes with this crazy starry dial uh and it's got you know the birch dials and i think on the dial game Romalti have smashed it the case is great uh, movement's good and then the gmt version as well they've smashed it again so i think if you want a smaller, more wearable MM300, uh, and it's MM200 technically, then definitely go for a multi, but I'm gonna keep them in the honorable mention section. So I think I've done quite well in terms of time, you know, given what I've covered. So now let's talk about the watches that I can't cover. 
uh, because I can't give you the same level of detail. So I'm going to run through a few watches and the ones that I couldn't cover, we've got the SKX uh, homage, we've got the GS homages, we've got the Sumo homages, we've got the 6105H1000 homages, um, you know, the one before the Captain Willard and some turtles and the monster homages. So let's start off with the SKX homage. I have not seen anything better than the Heimdallers. Uh, the Heimdall SKX is immense like variants, uh, all you know, kind of on point. But the biggest problem they had was the very inconsistent bezels. Um, and I don't think any one brand has got the SKX 007 completely right. Uh, and this is like, you know, after uh, going through all these watches, because initially, I was guilty of it as well you know we were calling them skx killers but when you have a seiko skx uh, original unmodified version you can definitely appreciate some things about it the finishing uh, and how smooth the case is it's untouched i don't really care about specs then um so nothing nothing really killed the skx that was just us like being you know uh naive and blown away by the specs and that's the honest truth um but heimdallah did do it they had the best skx homage going hands down so for the GSs, uh, so not one brand has done the same like for like GS, so I can't really compare. But what I can say is I think top of the table for me would be San Martin on the GS Diver Homage. Incredible bezel rotation, incredible bracelet. I think still till this day the best bracelet from AliExpress. Yes, it did come at a price, but you know, it has to. Um, but I think they messed up on the dial a bit. The they could have done a lot more on the dial, but everything else was amazing. I recently just sold mine, I'd say about three weeks ago, I sold it because it just wasn't getting any use. So next, you guys definitely know what I'm going to say. With the next GS in line, the Romalti is the best one after that, uh, you know, for like the sporty version and the main kind of GSs that we see. I don't need to say anything else on it. You already know the ins and outs of this. Um, and then coming a close second to Romalti is the Seastern. And I still wear this, uh, and I think the best dial option is the white with the blue seconds hand. Uh, case, bracelet, you know, very good. Uh, look how close it is to the actual Romalti. Uh, it's actually a slimmer uh, bracelet. I think Seaston lost out on the dials. They could have done a lot more with the dials, in my opinion, uh, and Romalti definitely have. One to mention, the Pagani design, Diver, absolutely poor. I know a lot of people like it, I don't know why. Bezels rotations crap uh my one the reason i'm a bit salty about it is uh the end links were just bent um the way they were brushed and machined it was just awful so i didn't really like it and i think the color i felt a bit betrayed because it showed a different color than i had and you know you guys can see the video i'm having a bit of a moan on it but it is what it is next up sumo so steel dive is the better value for money for the sumo homage uh, and addy's dive i kind of class steel dive and addy's dive especially in those models, exactly the same. Uh, I think only now they've kind of stepped away from Steel Dive. Uh, but the San Martin one is the best. Again, more refined, better bezel. Um, the bracelet is slightly better, uh, but it isn't that comfortable still. Uh, but yeah, that's that's what I think about the Sumo series. Um, then you've got the 6105-8000, uh, the Rodune 6105-8000, of course. Great value for money as well but the same thing applies as i said about the captain willard i think the most authentic one to date steel dive do a great version as well i think a better value for money one it's a bit cheaper and it kind of does the job it, it really does look the part um and that's barry i'm not going to mention any others uh, the last one monster is, I, I believe season have discontinued this and the contenders for the monsters definitely you had the heimdallah which you know the first ones that come out with it and then you had season um, and when I did the comparison, the Seastern took it by like a fraction, right? They were just that little bit better on the finishing uh, of the bezel. Um, and on the case, they were just a bit more accurate to the actual uh, Gen 2 or Gen 3. Um, but it wasn't a lot in there. But what Heimdallah had, you know, they've got more dial, more relevant dial options. You know, save the ocean style dials, um, you know, the different colored dials, different colored bezels. So they have got loads of variants and they're still going now. So... Given that Heimdall are better in that sense, uh, the Seaston is just that touch better, but I think Seaston are discontinued now for the Monster, which is quite surprising. Uh, and then as an honourable mention is the Rectangular, the Rodune, they did a totally unique piece of the Heimdall Monster with a sawtooth style bezel. Uh, I don't know if you guys can recall that review. Great sunburst style. I actually loved the dial and hand setup. It was amazing to look at. Uh, the, what laid down was the bezel rotation. It was just poor. 
but the bezel did look funky and I think a rectangular stand in its own way that's why it's an honorable mention uh, so that's it for this review guys I know it's a long one thank you guys for, for kind of sticking around and hearing me out now uh, I've got to do the extensive work of editing and getting all the links of everything I've spoken about within the videos uh, so please use the links if you want to buy any one of them uh, and let me know your thoughts in the comment section of what you think is the best and something which I should have mentioned. So thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video.